The cover art to Nintendo's 2003 smash hit GameCube title, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, is terrible. No, you just don't get it. It's meant to be a throwback to the gold cartridges of classic Zelda games, you might say. That's an interesting point. The original Zelda had a fantastic-looking, shiny gold cartridge that set it apart from almost every other NES game available at the time. The original North American box was even designed with a little cutout window to let you see just what you were missing by not owning such an illustrious gold object. The gold of the cartridge represented the gold of the Triforce, the ultimate sacred object that's the end goal of nearly every Zelda game. It's beautiful. It's powerful. It works. It works so well that they did it again and again for several more games in the series. The only problem is, the cover to the Wind Waker isn't gold. This is gold. It looks great. 10 out of 10. This is also gold. 10 out of 10. This is kinda gold? 7 out of 10. This is the same level of gold as that one, but the hologram does a lot to make it feel shinier than it really is. 8 out of 10. This? Not gold! This is some kind of slightly glossy beige at the very best. 0 out of 10. And it's not as if they couldn't make GameCube art inserts look shiny. Metroid Prime 2 Echoes look like this, and Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness look like this. Practically flawless in the shine department. Even the Enter the Matrix game had this sort of situation going on, which, while maybe a little weird looking, still brings a respectable amount of shine to the table. So we know the shine technology existed. Alright, sure, Enter the Matrix came out two months after The Wind Waker in North America, so maybe those two months were spent exclusively developing shines. Who knows? The cover to The Wind Waker is still bad because this tiny low opacity link on the cover looks terrible. King of Red Lions looks okay though. The thing about Toon Link's design is that it's so incredibly simple, and that simplicity lends it the ability to look really great with ease. But the simplicity also means that the slightest off element will send the whole thing spiraling immediately down into the Uncanny Valley. Some of Wind Waker's official art even has this problem. If Link's eyes have even the slightest bit of guonk, everything goes straight off the rails, and that's exactly the problem with the Wind Waker cover. The actual art on this thing looks bad. Link looks unsettling, and the colors are boring to the point of bordering on offensive. The Japanese cover was much better. It was colorful, fun, and perhaps most importantly, Link didn't have a thousand yard stare. It looks way better than the North American cover, which Nintendo of America apparently finally realized when they released the Wind Waker HD in 2013. A nice cover. Link looks good, and the art they use for him is an updated version of the one on the original Japanese cover. The color design is good. And it actually looks kind of gold. Not like this. This looks bad. And if you like it, you should feel bad.